Welcome back to the lowdown with him, uh, answering your questions, no less. Uh, oh, Bradley no more, no Sickers less. Evans is the first one. Uh, who came up with the name His Infernal Majesty? Oh, we were studying like the like, occult back in the day. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, I think it was Anthony Levey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> I think probably. it's like in the in the preface of uh, of a uh, satanic bible or something. Yeah, something, <laughs> yeah, something as stupid as that. We, we you know, since we knew that Black Sabbath stole their name off of a horror film. Right. We wanted something horrific and de demonic and crazy and. Uh, you know, that was the, we just opened up a book and that was it. Yeah, yeah, were there yeah. any other alternatives at that yeah, time? Yeah, yeah there were pro, pro, yeah. We, we were supposed to be calling ourselves uh, Black Earth because, you know, right. Black Sabbath and then they used to be yeah, called yeah. Earth before. So we thought that that would be a great makeshift. But I don't know, I think somebody had used that name already. Yeah, something like that. Or... But, I, you know, but, but picking a band name is, you know, is the toughest thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. And then if you try to be too worthy or too, worthy or too clever, it, it's always going to bite you up in the butt, you know. Stuck with it for life as well. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> but then we just shortened it up at some point because uh, it, it was just hard for a lot of people to pronounce and remember. Right. So I became a bit more, you know, symbolic. Excellent. So, Right, Stephen King, presumably, presumably not the Stephen oh. King. Uh, oh, okay. Us, uh, have you got any? I really like Cujo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we appreciate have, your work. Yeah. Have you got any uh, special plans for Download Festival? Special plans, you know, maybe like a, you should have like a survival plan. I think you know. <laughs> yeah, you do. <did. laughs> it's on, on a several levels. But... Yeah, what? I don't know. Huh? Oh, you mean a wide survival plan? No, oh, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> if no. you leave home, always have a plan. Oh yeah, true, true. Car. Medicine, firearms. Fair enough, fair enough. I think the best plan is not to have too many plans because uh, festivals in general are all about improvisation. You have to keep your ears and your eyes open because those are the places where you get to meet a lot of people you yeah. might have never seen, or then people you haven't seen in years you might find yourself in, you know, some other places in the middle <laughs> of the night. You never know. So that's the cool thing about it, not to make too many plans. And, uh, and musically talking about the gig thing, you know, we're not quite there yet. We're trying to figure it out. We're not sure how, how long the set is going to be and we want to make sure that we get all the, uh, you know, proper ditties. You know. Are you guys properly sociable then uh, when it comes to backstage at festivals? Well, depending. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what hour of the night it is. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm emitting any kind of a social, <laughs> you know. Butterflies. Well, a bit of hermits, you know. I, I think that Scandinavian people are, you know, pretty quiet. But then, then again, you know, it, it's depending on who's there. And, right. uh, and obviously there's going to be a lot of friends who are not playing, so, you know, just visiting over. And as you know, the VIP tent is a pretty entertaining spot to be. It is. You know, yeah, it's like a <laughs> war field, you know, with all those people falling down and all that. It is like the beginning scene of Pri Saving Private Ryan by about, by <laughs> yeah, about midnight. Yeah. Yeah. Way better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tanya Jane Burnett asks, uh, when was the last time you saw Bam? That was a long time ago. That was uh, when we played. Uh, that was on our previous tour. We toured uh, our previous album, Screamworks, and that was in. Was it in Las Vegas? I cannot remember. Because that's when he hopped, he hopped into a bus. Oh, with he some did. Chicks yeah, yeah, yeah. in LA, and then he uh, came to Vegas with us. And I think that he's probably still in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so it's been a while. He's been busy with his own stuff, and then he hasn't traveled to Europe. And he hasn't mm. been skating. I think he's been, you know, behaving, you know, doing this rock and roll thing. He's got that band and everything. So. They, they were just in Australia, you know, and he's a really tough type of, uh, guy to get a hold on. Right. You know, he's always losing his phones. He, he probably doesn't know how to use an email, so uh, so it's always been a challenge. We had quite a few questions as well about um, going to the US this time out. Uh -huh. uh, is, that, is that is that a plan on this touring cycle? In, in, in general? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, the the idea now is uh, at the end of April we're playing um, a couple of gigs in Germany, doing the thing walls thing. Then we're playing eight gigs. In, in the States to right. uh, you know the kind of like the bigger places LA, New York, San Francisco, Chicago, then going to, to Canada, Toronto, then Philadelphia. I think that's it. And then then that's the then the downloading thingy start and 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 then yeah when the school starts uh, the autumn that's that's when the touring starts for us. Excellent. Our, our rock school. Yeah. School of life. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, Eric uh, Erin Minnick asks uh, why did you decide to write and perform in English? Well, maybe because the bands that we like did it. You know, the, we grew up with the music that was actually, you know, performed in our English language. So, mm. so they, probably because of that mainly. And of course, you know, maybe we wanted to expand like a virus, you know, across the borders. So, you know, that's pretty much the only way to do it, I guess. Yeah, there's not very many international well-known bands that sing in Finnish. Mm. You know, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and same, same with German. You know, it's like Rammstein are probably the only one who's been mm. able to like spread their wings and fly. Did yeah, yeah, yeah. never got out of Germany? Yeah. No, not really, not really. <laughs> yeah. no, no. So maybe on the, for the holidays. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joey Wilcock asks, uh, 
How do you cope without smoking on stage in the UK? Well, you know, there's a little secret. We do you have the smoke machines, and they do have a tiny bit of nicotine in the film one. So yeah. that, that's the way to do it. No, yeah. no, not really. Well, we're not <laughs> sure if that's I believe anything. Legal, you see my yeah. gullible eyes yeah, like up there? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, yeah. we, we, um, we, at least in the previous tours, we've had a couple of... Um, we played songs like, let's say, Sleepwalking Past Hope, which is like a 12-minute track, and it's got a real long instrumental bit. So I usually have the time to like, smoke one or two. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's better for the vocal cords not to smoke. And then yeah. I was, um, I was uh, non-smoking for a couple of years, and uh, now I just picked up again. It's a, it's a, it's a bad habit, but I'll get there eventually. Okay, uh, Cindy Banak asks, uh, what's your favorite hymn video? Ooh, we've well, made so many. Mm. <coughs> oh. you, well, well, let's say one one that's pretty kind of exciting was uh, was the uh, Bam Margera directed um, one for Bird Lab I loved with Juliet Lewis in it because mm -hmm. it was just that was our first video in the states and it was like in right. Los Angeles and and. Uh, meeting a movie star and... Was it your biggest budget at that point as well? No, it wasn't too expensive. Right. No, it wasn't, you know, because it was done by friends, for friends. So it, it, everything worked out super like do-it-yourself mode. So it was, it was really good. But um, it was just, there was great times with Love Metal and all that stuff. And, and videos are so tough because it's like, you're, you know, you don't know, but you never know what you're going to get. You know, you kind of like, somebody writes like, you know, the band's going to be in the dark forest and then we're going to CGI like tons of bats flying all, all around and then you're going to be underneath the ice and blah, blah, blah. And it only costs you $500,000. So let's go and do <laughs> okay, it. And then at the end of the day, you, what you get is like, there's going to be like the band is playing cotton candy. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's tough. You, it's always tough with videos. But now we're kind of happy now. Now we just saw, um, you saw a video for uh, this uh, guy, a Finnish guy called Stefan Lindfors who uh, did our video for Funeral of Hearts. Mm. He just uh, directed uh, Tears and Take and Into the Night, two tracks, new tracks. And I, I, I think that those are pretty, pretty nice, you know, for what we've done. And we look pretty decent, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, you know. Yeah, for age. Marks out of 10? Um, for the looks, not the video. Oh, um, <laughs> um, um, I'm 7.8. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eva Ars asks, uh, why did you use uh, Malakim Alphabet? On the cover to Tears of Tape. Well, that was um, yeah. no worries, no worries. Uh, there was a uh, Dempy Carter who uh, who uh, was a friend of ours. Uh, I asked him to um, come up with something. I didn't know that he was uh, studying art back in the day, and he had done some record covers in the past and all that stuff. And we started talking about art in general, and then he showed me a couple of uh, bits and bobs of his paintings whilst we were mixing the album in London. And then I got really excited. Uh, and, uh, and asked him if he wants to participate in the cover artwork. And it's a couple of weeks, and, and he'd done several, several pieces that, that are all included in the actual booklet. So to answer the question is, it's, it's, it was his call to use the Malakin. In the, and, you know, I love that pseudo or call. Yeah, no angels can read it too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an old angelic language. So, so it was and which angels. Is. True, true. Which angels? And a uh, final question. Uh, Raven Swartz asked, mm -hmm. could you su suggest some good books to read? Um, I just finished something that was really good. Uh, Twilight Man by Boyd Rice. It's really good. I'm just reading it. Uh, then I finished uh, The London's Lost Artist, Austin Austin's Despair by, I think, Phil, Beck Hake, uh, Phil Baker. That's a really good biography on, uh, on uh, uh, the artist Spare, who's a very, very intriguing character, or was a very intriguing character. Those are the last two ones I've been reading, so, and, uh, yeah. Mega? Yeah. Um, Papillon. Papillon. Oh, Papillon. By, uh, by a French prisoner. But that's a, it has great tips for, you know, like, if you go to prison or, uh, or well, a festival. Well, actually, to a festival, or, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down I'll, like, I'll for save example. your money. Right. Yeah, if you don't want to lose your money, there's only one logical solution for it, which is, I don't know if I can say it on TV, but you know, <laughs> everybody can read the book and find out. There you go. It's, it's a great book. It's re it really is a good book. You know, Building the suspense uh, very as well. Yeah. Right, thanks for your time. Let's play a few rules of hearts. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.